Number 10, spy tools. Back in August 2016, a group named the Shadow Brokers were the talk of the town. How could you not be with a name like that? That name makes them sound like a comic book villain. The Shadow Brokers? What? But check this out. The Shadow Brokers would basically steal cyber weapons from an NSA hacking unit and then proceed to sell them online to the highest bidder. The Shadow Brokers. I can't lie, it's a pretty sick name. The intentions, however, not so rad, not so radical. These tools have been used by many countries and many schemes. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, you name it. These cyber attacks are also no joke. Once the entire city of Baltimore was under quite the cyber attack, I swear to God, the entire city, the 2019 ransomware cyber attack all connected to said shadow brokers. Yeah, whoever this mysterious group is still remains a mystery. Is it you? If so, click thumbs up on this video. Moving on at number nine, we have Nixon's health. Now, this isn't really classified information, but I thought it was quite interesting and it was brought to my attention by Kelly Kama Roy on Reddit. So, the files of Richard Nixon's longtime physician, Dr. Walter Tkach, probably said that last name wrong, are on lockdown. The doctor's son has the files and is planning to eventually release them to the Nixon library, but when he does, they will not be open for 75 years. Not only that, but taped conversations between Nixon and his doctor are also on lockdown and they will not be released. Now why is this significant? Well, some people believe that Nixon was incapacitated towards the end of his presidency. If so, then under the 25th amendment, he should have had his authority suspended. So there's a reason why the government has been keeping these files classified. It's going to apparently expose a lot. In our 8th spot, we have the trade documents. Back in 2019, the Reddit account OsterMaxNN leaked a bunch of UK government trade documents. The documents discussed future trade deals between the US and the UK. They also revealed plans by the Conservative Party to privatize National Health Service. After investigation, it turns out that the Reddit user that leaked the documents was part of a larger coordinated effort from Russia. Reddit said, and I quote, we investigated this account and the accounts connected to it. And today we believe this was part of a campaign that has been reported as originating from Russia. In our seventh spot, we have Area 51. Everyone wants to know what really goes on in Area 51. Is it really where they are keeping aliens? I need to know. But sadly, we don't truly know. But we do have some insider information on what it's like in Area 51. Yeah, you heard me. Eight years ago, a Reddit user by the name of Kiver16 revealed that his mother's boyfriend is Steven Gorvan, aka one of the people who was at Area 51 testing the Mars rover. He uploaded a picture of Steven holding a sign saying, Hi, Reddit, ask me anything, as proof that it actually was him and he wasn't just going to make it up. So people quickly jumped to it, asking him tons of questions on the mysterious base. During one part of the Q&A, Steven revealed that when he first arrived at the base, he saw a strange aircraft flying low across the desert floor. Floor. He believed that it was a test flight for a secret aircraft. He said it moved at subsonic speed and didn't make a lot of noise. He also revealed that Area 51 is much bigger than it looks, with tons of different sectors and buildings. Now, sadly, he didn't see any aliens. But he did reveal that it seemed like we are close to hoverboard technology, like the ones you see in Back to the Future. So that's pretty cool. Moving on to number six, we have DB Cooper, one of the most famous and mysterious cases of all times. And I might have found out what happened to him. But first, let me give a rundown on this dude for the people who have no clue what I'm talking about. Dan Cooper, or DB Cooper, is a man who was responsible for a plane hijacking in 1971. No one knows who he is or where he is now. So in 1971, Cooper boarded the plane and once in the air, he handed the flight attendant a note saying that he had a bomb in his suitcase. He demanded $200,000 and a parachute, but he didn't want any hostages. So they landed in Seattle, he got his request, and then he told the pilot to fly to Mexico City. However, along the way, he took the money and his parachute and jumped out of the plane. The police looked for Cooper until 2016, and this case is known as one of the longest active searches in history. Now, 
Two years ago, a former FBI special agent joined Reddit and did an AMA, ask me anything. To prove it was really him, he held a piece of paper like the other dude, saying his name and his Reddit, blah blah blah. The man is Mark Ruskin, who worked 20 years in undercover operations. One of the questions that someone asked him was about DB Cooper and what the FBI thought happened to him and what he thought happened to him. Ready for this? Both the FBI and Mark believe that DB Cooper did not survive the parachute down. I know, I know, so anticlimactic, but apparently they have evidence to suggest he didn't make it. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cat bomb. So, this secret isn't really a secret anymore. I guess most of these aren't secrets anymore, but I didn't know this was a thing until I read about it on Reddit, meaning that I bet some of you haven't heard about it either. So during World War II, the government thought it would be a good idea to strap a cat to a bomb. They thought that by doing so, it would assure the bombs would reach their target. Cats hate water, so they thought if you drop a cat strapped to a bomb over water, the cat would avoid the water and then would just land on the battleship's deck. But obviously. For many reasons, that did not work out. Cats would end up passing out midair before sinking without a trace. They also tried something similar with bats, which again, didn't really work. Moving on to number four, we have the bomb shelter. This is going to come to a shock to anyone who lives outside of the US. Posted on Reddit by the user Deadpool8988, they said that at one point, the US government was telling people to build a bomb shelter in their backyards. They instructed people to dig a big enough hole in their backyard and then cover it with a door. They were told to hide out there in case of a nuclear attack. But turns out, that the real reason why they were telling families to do this was so that if there was a nuclear attack, the government wouldn't have to bury as many bodies. So families were literally digging their own graves. That is extremely disturbing. In our third spot, we have the blood supply. Okay, this one is going to be pretty crazy. So back in 1984, the Red Cross Society in Canada was importing blood products from the US. This was at the time of the AIDS crisis, and America was hit much harder with it. There was fear that the disease was going to be transmitted through this blood. But the Red Cross ignored it, and according to this Reddit user who was a lab worker for the American Red Cross, apparently they were aware of this and so was the US government. But they didn't warn Canadians. Instead, they told them they had nothing to worry about and that they tested the blood before sending it. The guy was forced to keep his mouth shut and lie. As a result, tons of hemophiliacs who had blood transfusions later died of AIDS. What's freaky? is that the reddit user that shared this information later deleted his account. I just hope that he's safe and that the government didn't come for him for exposing them. In our second spot we have the leaked emails. In March 2016, the personal gmail account of John Podesta, a former White House Chief of Staff and Chair of Hillary Clinton's 2016 US presidential campaign, was hacked and his emails revealed some very disturbing things. So the emails were posted to Reddit along with other websites and then users started to decipher them. They believe that Hillary and other people of power are part of a human king and a sex ring. In the emails, they use code words like pizza, cheese pizza, and hot dogs. Kind of weird. And it would say things like, and I quote, I'm dreaming about your hot dog stand in Hawaii. Clearly, there's a hidden message to that. I can't dive into too much detail about it for obvious reasons, but you should do some research of your own. It's crazy. What makes this more suspicious is that the government removed all posts about this from Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, and other social media sites. Any posts about the emails and the theories will be removed. And in our number one spot, we have the blue van. Okay, this one thoroughly creeps me out, like it just proves that the government is up to no good. So this story was posted on Reddit by a former homicide detective. One time he was called to a scene where the victim had called 911 saying that someone was trying to kill him. He told police that he was hiding in his panic room. When they arrived at his house, there were no signs of forced entry. 
and all the doors remained locked from the inside. Inside the house there was no damage, it was just super clean, no signs of violence or anything. Due to this, the detective believed that the attacker was someone that the man knew and invited inside. When they eventually got to the panic room, they found the man sitting on the floor. His face had a terrified expression plastered on it. Both of his arms were missing, not cut off. They looked as if they had been ripped off. His missing limbs were never found. Now, here's where it gets spooky. As soon as they reported their findings, the police captain told the team to give all of the evidence, along with the victim's body, to the individuals in a blue van that had arrived on the scene. The blue van belonged to the government. After they did this, the case was buried. They never heard any more information on it. Like what? Seems like some government creature got released and killed this guy or something like that and then they're trying to cover it up. Kicking off the list at number 10, nuclear site list. Here on Most Amazing, we love lists. I'm not sure if you can tell, but apparently the US government also fancies a list or two. Back when Obama was still running the show, a report was delivered to Congress. Well, it was supposed to be. The 266 page report featured every nook and cranny about the US nuclear program, and it was released publicly on the government printing office's website and draft forum by accident. Yeah, just a casual PDF that shows us literal maps to stockpiled fuel used for nuclear warheads back in the day. We love those. The only PDFs I actually enjoy are those ones, actually. Does this stuff happen often? How does this happen? I thought this type of stuff could never happen, right? Well, MIT professor John M. Dutch said these screw-ups do happen, and it doesn't look like a serious breach. I mean, it certainly sounds serious, but okay, we'll trust the government. Thank you, sir. Let's do it. Number nine, hide your bread. Putting your money in your mattress sounds a lot easier than this system, that's for sure. Way less complicated too. Back in 2016, journalists all over the world were looking into what's called the Panama Papers, a plethora of leaked documents. Now these all came from a law firm, Mozak Fonseca. The operation here was that the firm would help the super rich hide their money in these offshore tax havens. And before you ask, yes, they got caught and this whole thing was of course shut down. In total, there were 140 politicians from 50 countries who were all busted, including the Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Iceland's former Prime Minister Singunder David Gunnlaugsson. Yeah, y'all guilty. And we found out. Just, just be rich. Just be rich and do the things you have to do when you're rich. Don't hide your money. Number eight, SIM cards. In February 2015, it was reported that Snowden, our good boy Edward Snowden, he provided documents that showed that the NSA and the GCHQ had all hacked into a Dutch company that is responsible for manufacturing and supplying 2 billion SIM cards per year to big names. Names like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, you're probably paying for some of these, you name it, right? While this hack would suggest that the agencies would then now have access to billions of unique encryption keys, which could potentially allow them to bypass wireless providers and monitor both the voice and data transmissions of every user, i.e. us. The company had actually been the target of at least two sophisticated intrusions, and they believed that the NSA and <laughs> juicy headquarters, GCHQ, were all responsible, but the company then denied that the hack was successful in gaining access to all these encryption keys. Yeah, no, just just the dirty text, nothing else. We're good though. Let's just hope that's the case. I mean, honestly, I'm deleting my history anyways, just to be safe. Number seven, military dolphins. Yeah, I said military dolphins. We're gonna get weird now, I guess. Iran has plenty of nuclear capabilities, but they also have trained dolphins now too, so good game. Back in 2000, Iran bought this fleet of trained dolphins from Russia, just, you know, Russians doing Russian things, but they were trained supposedly by the Soviet Union to attack ships, and yes, even people. We have Navy SEALs and military dolphins. This is it, behind the scenes for Aquaman 2, I guess. What's going on here? Well, recently, like 2018 recent, satellite photos revealed a Russian naval base in Syria with pens that are commonly used for holding, you guessed it, dolphins. Yep, the dolphins are back. Ooh. Russia and the US both have fleets of trained dolphins to detect mines, but now Iran's in the mix as well. Is the next world war gonna be dolphins? That would be loud. Number six, secret iPods. Nowadays, it feels like there's a new iPhone or a new iGadget every other day. Technology is evolving a little too fast, I'd say. VR? Not for me, I'm not ready. My body was not ready for that. Music is also personal. Spotify, way too personal. But have you heard of Apple's top secret iPod? Would you get one of these? I'd pre-order it, let's do it. Back in 2005, former Apple software engineer David Shayer revealed that the tech giant once partnered up with the US Department of Energy. This special iPod was designed to test radiation on the go without drawing any attention from the public. Yeah, imagine this thing in an Apple commercial. 
just dancing silhouettes, having a good time, and then just one guy suspiciously in the background, like, listening to music. This was, of course, top secret information back in the day, but Apple secretly helping the government by putting a Giger counter in an iPod for a spy, that's eh, next level, that's shady. We're gonna talk about that on this list for sure. Number five, catfish. I mentioned bird drones in part two, so obviously I gotta mention robot android catfish. Yep, you didn't believe them, they've arrived. What are we gonna do now, folks? The general public found out about this hidden spectacle in 2020. Catfish robots, specifically one named Charlie. Yes, it has a name. It isn't like the rest of the fish in school, okay? This one's actually an undercover agent working for the CIA, so he's a different fish. This all initially happened back in the 90s when the CIA was trying to collect water samples, obviously in secret, so they would send Charlie Chaplips upstream by using wireless communications. That was their high tech, that was their James Bond plan, believe it or not. And yes, this was high tech stuff at the time, all hidden inside the 60 centimeter long catfish. Sometimes spy tech is cool, you know, like a secret iPod, that's, that's neat, we like that. This was not one of them. I don't think Charlie will make an appearance in the next Mission Impossible movie, you know what I mean? I don't think Tom Cruise is gonna send up a robotic fish. Number four, caller ID. Back to our boy Snowden for this one, of course. He's so good, how can we not talk about him? The king of leaks, besides Sony, obviously. In 2013, it was revealed by The Guardian that according to the documents that were leaked by Snowden, the Obama administration allowed the NSA to collect different caller information from Verizon. Yeah, this was done through what's called a business records proposition of the Patriot Act that was established under the presidency of one George W. Bush. So this allowed the government to order Verizon to hand over caller information every single day. Yeah, all those breakups, all those prank calls, give them. Give them here. This information included things like the time, location, and the duration of your calls. The information also began being collected under the Bush administration in 2001, and they were collected from AT&T, Verizon, and Bell South. Now, of course, once these documents were leaked to the public and this information was, you know, widely spread, US officials began trying to reassure the public that this surveillance was somehow necessary and was actually a program vital to national security. Yeah, no worries, guys. We have to do it. We're trying to help you, you know? Help us help you by showing us your text messages. But many people, like you're probably thinking right now, thought that the spying was unnecessary and it was an invasion of their privacy. I have to agree. Number three, more documents. I mentioned earlier those offshore accounts for those higher ups, you know, those big bad boys. Well, a year later, after that 2016 scandal, even more documents were exposed. All the docs, all around the clock. Docs around the clock. Didn't even script that, that's how good I am. Docs around the clock, we can franchise that. Meaning, even more secrets. Even more names. Spill the tea, who is it this time? Well, amongst the 13 million documents, we saw Nike and Apple. Yeah, they're shady, who knew? They had around $250 billion hidden in offshore accounts. On top of that, they were financial connections to the literal Queen of England and Justin Trudeau. Yeah, our, our Canadian lad. We got mad at him a lot for going to his cottage the last few years. Meanwhile, we forgot he's in some offshore accounts. There you go, some more juice to get mad at him about. Number two, Project Dishfire. This one sounds calming, Project Dishfire. Sounds like the best detergent you can get. It was reported by The Guardian that the NSA collects 200 million text messages a day from around the world. Yeah, this is, I'm just exposing all of your secret texts for this one, I was really coming for it. I bet half of these texts literally just say, you up? The government's like, damn it, we'll try again tomorrow. They would then use these messages to pull the details of its user. You know, location, time, contact information, and credit card details. Stuff you don't want out there to anybody. Especially people wearing dress shirts. Ugh, the worst. It was also reported that the NSA also provided British intelligence agencies with all of that data, just without the actual context of the text messages. Which is, that's comforting. Basically, they have all this data, and at any point, they could extract anything they wanted, like older purchases, past travel plans, past financial transactions, all your contacts, regardless of whether or not you're being investigated for anything at all, just because they feel like it. Yes, this sounds illegal, unethical, and quite shady, and it really was. All this happened right before former President Barack Obama gave a speech about proposed policy changes in response to the Snowden leak, so the timing couldn't be more crucial. And finally, number one, VX gas. The government using gas to take out targets. What is this, Mission Impossible? This is scary, I won't be able to sleep after this. What am I writing? VX gas is tasteless and it's odorless. It could take you out just by skin contact alone. The nerve agent VX is of course extremely illegal as well, obviously. It came from ICIS research from the early 50s when developing new insecticides. And it worked, a little too well I'd say, and it was swiftly and thankfully outlawed. 
But the bell can't be unrung now, can it be? This was the same nerve gas that was used to take out Kim Jong Nam back in 2017. That was a, a new revelation we discovered. We're like, oh, it was this gas. That's terrifying. Yeah, he was attacked at an airport. Two people rubbed a cloth on his face. That's all it took. It was covered in VX, and then he died on the way to the hospital. He had a seizure. How scary is that? Initially, officials thought cyanide was used here, but in reality, it was only 10 milligrams of VX. So far, that's the only confirmed case of VX being used to take somebody out. Again, the only one we know so far, so. Sleep in fear, that's all I'm saying. Off this countdown, we have the spies. Tons of people are afraid that the government is spying on them. It's thought that they can tap into our phones and watch us and listen to our calls, even though I don't know why they would want to. Like, what are they gonna see me scrolling through like Instagram all day? It's not a pretty sight. Now, we can't really prove that they do, but recently a post on Reddit revealed that they are tracking us. So I don't know if this is a thing outside of Canada, but it is in Canada. So Apple and Android phones now have a COVID-19 sensor on them. Basically, this allows the government to track your every move. A couple of weeks ago, a lot of cell phone users were having phone disruptions, and that's apparently when the tracker was put on the phones in secret. But it's not on all phones. Once you update your phone, then it's automatically turned on. Don't believe me? Well, the post says that for iPhone users, go to settings, privacy, health, and then you'll see it. But it's not yet functional. For Android users, go to settings, then Google settings, and it should be there. This is said to be able to notify you if you've been near someone that has the virus. But it's also a way for the government to track your every move. Seriously, why would they have this feature and then just like not tell us about it? Why is everything done in secrecy? They're up to something. Number nine, climate gate. Yeah, we had a smooth one off the bat. Now we're getting right into the serious stuff. Climate stuff, <laughs> climate change and stuff. A little different sounding than Watergate, but we'll get to that one later on, obviously. Climate gate, this was back in 2009 when some hackers some hackers released thousands of emails and files all from the climate research unit in the UK. These documents, okay, hold on to your butts for this one, they show scientists suppressing the publication of research going against global warming. So this sparked a bunch of bad ideas because at that point in 2009, we just believed it. We just stopped listening at all. Climate change critics were like, aha, I knew it. It was all a conspiracy this whole time. The CRU responded and said the emails were out of context and that the planet is indeed heating up. And we're still in fact burning towards our demise, but these docs leaked literally weeks before the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Denmark, so peculiar timing, I'd say. Science fired back pretty quick. Scientists all around the world were actively proving at that point that humans actively are causing global warming. Today we're uh, scrambling a bit more to figure this one out than 2009. Yeah. A few more of you believe this time around. Number eight, God save the queen. This one's quite grim, but I have to talk about it. Have you ever wondered what happens, what will happen after the queen passes away? I mean, I know it's the last thing we want to think about right now because because uh, dark, obviously. But it's hard not to think of, especially when Politico magazine releases Operation London Bridge to the public. Yeah, what is that? This magazine somehow got documents showing each and every step in detail what'll happen when that fateful day arrives. There'll be phone calls to the Prime Minister, of course, would be first. Customs require that the Prime Minister is informed by the monarch's private security. Flags will fly at half-mast, of course, but oddly enough, in this document, the Queen's death is referred to as D-Day. Yeah, nine days of protocols will follow after Afterwards, and after a service at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, that's when Queen Elizabeth will be buried with King George VI. It's dark, but I mean, imagine reading about this one morning in 2021. What an odd article. What a, what a brutal way to wake up. Number seven, secret PowerPoint. Yeah, nothing sounds less cool than a leaked 41 slide PowerPoint presentation, but I'll do my best. Here we go. When it comes to the NSA, odds are this PowerPoint is going to be pretty juicy, right? This slideshow was often used to train US intelligence, and I gotta say, 41 pages? That's it. I did 45 on Medieval Knights and high school. That's all I'm saying, step your game up. This program was called PRISM. You probably heard about this, this is a big deal. And it cost about $20 million a year. This was the highlight of the Snowden leak. PRISM kicked off back in 2007. See, originally they partnered with Microsoft, but once they were attached to Apple come 2012, that's when things got a little dicey as most things are with Apple. The PowerPoint confirmed that the NSA has access to servers belonging to massive tech giants. Google, Skype, YouTube even, so I don't know, search history, you may wanna delete that stuff. There was a summit in California which originally was tense. The United States was accusing China of cyber attack, but right after Edward Snowden leaked the prism tea, they didn't have much power at said summit. So China and Europe citizens were obviously not too pleased here. 
Yeah, leaked data, we don't, we don't like hearing about that. There's a, this one gets a little worse. Number six, Big Brother is watching. Even allies of the United States are not safe here, okay? Thanks to Snowden, our boy again, gotta mention him a couple times on this list. At the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of eyes, a lot of spies. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones, not just a couple of dudes. They were spying on 35 world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after finding out and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Oh, brutal. She said the F word too. She's like, hey, we were friends, pal. Don't go through my phone. Don't swipe left in the photos, okay? Betrayal. Well, it was also reported that the NSA was monitoring phone, like regular phone calls in Spain for the average folks. So if you thought you were off the hook, you're not, literally and figuratively. They monitored about 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, be a little concerned about these guys. Maybe. You know, save some tea for in person. You don't want to give up all that good stuff on the phone. Number five, leaked voters. Back in December 2015, personal information from 191 million voters was leaked to the public online. Yeah, this feels like yesterday. I remember this all unfolding. I was like, what? How? Researcher Chris Vickery found this data while conducting a security investigation. See, Forbes had described Vickery as, dare I say, a good hacker. They're what's referred to as these white hat hackers. They find weak spots in security without sabotaging or exploding them, you know? Unlike Snowden or other people. That's that's the key, that's the Donnie difference. 79% of those eligible to vote were the victims here, so it was a big one. All their names, addresses, birth dates, phone numbers, emails, you name it, things you don't want other people knowing, let alone third parties, were all out there. If you could vote, you were exposed. We're still unsure who was behind this entire leak. CSO Online and databreaches.net suggest that the information more than likely came from software provider Nation Builder. But CEO Jim Gillum announced that that was not the case and they did not create the database. Although he conceded that it is possible that some of the information that it contains may have come from the data we make available for free to campaigns. He's like, no, we didn't do it, but maybe we did. <laughs> it's like, okay. So a third party took what they could and really ran with it. That's terrifying. Time to change your email again. Number four, psychoelectronic weapons. Yeah, this sounds like something Iron Man uses. It doesn't sound too chill now, does it? Psychoelectronic weapons. The first time Curtis Waltman heard of these uh, was by accident, as you could have guessed. He was receiving documents via Yahoo and they were not what he expected. See, originally he had filed a Freedom of Information Act request to Washington State Fusion Center. See, he was trying to find out more on the clashes between Antifa and the far right, but he got a response and it was all about experimental weapons. Guy gets a zip file back in return called EM effects on human body. He's like, Big Shiny Tune 6? He's like, what? I didn't ask for this. Way too many viruses in that one. Big, Big Shiny Tune 7, I think, was a good one. That's the good one. In this document, he saw diagrams on these weapons and the effects that they have on people. There's muscle quaking, all body pain. One of the effects allowed users to control their dreams. Is this a weapon? This is this is pretty remarkable. This was clearly sent by mistake. Ah, the only emails I get are student loans, and those ones are not by mistake. Those ones are definitely on purpose. They're like, Mr. Taylor. I'm like, oh, oh God, they found me. Number three, quantum computer. Uh, this next one's pretty eye-opening. Here we go. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Deep fakes are also getting way too good. I've fallen for way too many fake trailers. I thought they were doing a Back to the Future reboot with Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. for like four days. All fake. Whole thing's fake. But thanks to our man Snowden, the OG secret revealer, it was reported in the Washington Post on January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is working hard at creating their own computer. Yeah, how fun must that one be? I wonder if it can run Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 without getting hot. No computer can do that. It's called the Quantum Computer and it costs about 80 million to create this program. This computer is safely stored in a massive room sized metal box, not intimidating at all. It's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. So it can break encryptions for just about anything. Finance records, medical, your old MSN, hopefully, maybe, probably, definitely not. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption. This quantum computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption, which for the average computer today, that takes years. This supercomputer they're working on can break through a lot faster. We can get through in days, even hours. So you better clear that search history now while you still can. Thanks for the hot tip, Snowden. I was gonna switch to PC gaming, but you know what? I'll wait it out. I'll wait till this new one comes out. It looks a little faster. Number two, WikiLeaks war logs. Companies have to be somewhere, right? We're in a film studio in Toronto. We go to a certain place. We leave said certain place in a said certain area. Right? Where do places like WikiLeaks live? How do they stay secure? Well, in Stockholm, apparently, buried under 100 feet below street level in an old nuclear bunker. That's where. 
right next to Pirate Bay. They're neighbors, actually. They knock on the cement walls. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banoff. Now, this is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks, but Julian Assange, front runner of this whole operation, his hard drive is in this bunker behind a two foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators. So he's secure. In October 2010, WikiLeaks actually published Army Field reports from 2004 to 2009. Now, it's one of the biggest leaks in US history. This report confirmed that there were over 66,000 civilian deaths in the Iraq war logs out of the 109,000 confirmed in total. That's horrible. This leak also suggested that some American troops were classifying civilians as enemies in their statistics afterwards. These numbers were from 2004 to 2009. One of the biggest leaks in US history, no doubt about it. And finally, number one, Watergate. Yeah, it's not an internet leak, but it's too good to talk about. This is OG, come on. We have to finish on Watergate. In the middle of 1972, there were five men who were all arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, DC. Now, it was pretty obvious they intended on bugging the place. They looked like spy kids. They had all the gears. They were, you know, it was fishy. As the year went on, the election came closer and closer, and then all of a sudden, out of the woodwork comes this anonymous source who fed information to Washington Post reporters that apparently the Watergate bugging incident was a massive campaign of political spying and sabotage kicked off by none other than President Nixon himself. Yeah, he was trying to get that re-election. Now, despite this information leak and it being reported in the news and all that good stuff, Nixon was still re-elected, even though he was involved in this entire scandal. These men were clearly linked to a fundraising group for Nixon, but his administration just kept denying any involvement. It wasn't until a year later in 1972 when reporters Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, they also came forward and exposed more stuff. Yeah, they exposed the administration's role in this entire scandal and they had an inside source, an FBI agent named Mark Feltz, and this ultimately led to Nixon resigning later in 1974, the first president to do so. Mm -hmm.